capsule. And for that, I have made a diagrammatic representation of the internal capsule, the right side. So to bring us up to speed, this is the anterior limb of the internal capsule. This whole thing is the posterior limb of the internal capsule. And the portion which is joining the two is the genome of the internal capsule. And as we have already mentioned, on the medial side of the anterior limb, we have the caudate nucleus shown diagrammatically here. On the lateral side, we have the lentiform nucleus, which actually is indenting the internal capsule and giving it this V-shape open laterally. And on the posterior medial aspect of the posterior limb, we have this thalamus here. Let's take a quick look at the posterior limb of the internal capsule because that is clinically more important. The posterior limb of the internal capsule, we can divide in them, the fibers into two broad groups as shown by this artificial color coding. This lateral bundle of fibers here, this is the corticospinal tract, which I had shown earlier, and I'm going to show it again in another DTI image. This band of fibers that we see here, this is the thalamocortical fibers, which carry all the general sensations from the body to the somatosensory cortex of the parietal lobe. So let's take a look at the breakup of the fibers in the corticospinal tract first, because clinically this is very important. First, this is the anterior portion. The fibers in the anterior part of the lateral portion of the posterior limb of the internal capsule are the corticospinal fibers to the upper limb. Here, the fibers are the corticospinal tract fibers to the trunk, and it also carries the corticorubral fibers, that is from the cortex, to the red nucleus of the midbrain. Going further posteriorly, these are the fibers, the corticospinal fibers, tract fibers, which go to the lower motor neurons of the lower limb. And finally, at the posterior most tip, we have certain special type of fibers which come from the temporal lobe to the pontine nuclei. They are part of the frontopontine tract. In this case, they are referred to as the temporopontine fibers. We shall not bother about them in detail anymore. So this whole segment is the corticospinal tract. Corticospinal tract fibers to the upper limb, to the trunk, to the lower limb. Remember that these are all fibers which are descending down and we are seeing the cut section in an axial view. Let's take a look at these fibers here. This arrow represents the fact that the fibers descending, the impulses are traveling up. They are the thalamocortical fibers. They go from all the sensory thalamic nuclei to the somatosensory cortex in the parietal lobe and they carry the general sensation from the body. So this is the thalamocortical fibers carrying. Now let's take a look at this portion here, encircled in yellow. This is the genu of the internal capsule. Now what do the genu carry? The genu carries the corticonuclear or the corticobulbar tracts. And what are the corticonuclear, the corticobulbar tracts? They are the counterpart of the corticospinal tracts. The only difference being they start from the face area of the primary motor cortex and they end in the motor nuclei of the cranial nerves, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So these are the corticobulbar tracts and they supply the motor nuclei of the cranial nerves supplying the head and face. So this is the genu. One final word about this genu and the posterior limb. The whole genu and the posterior limb are supplied by some very special arteries, which are branches of the middle cerebral artery. And these arteries are known as the lenticulostriate arteries or the arteries of cerebral hemorrhage of Charcot. And these are the ones which are responsible for the vast majority of strokes involving the genu and the posterior limb of the internal capsule. Now let's take a look at the anterior limb of the internal capsule. The anterior limb of the internal capsule, the fibers are divided into, for the sake of understanding, into two groups. The ones labeled green are the fibers which are coming from the frontal lobe to the pontine nuclei. They are referred to as the frontopontine fibers or the frontopontine tracts. Now this is not just one fiber set of fibers. They have a whole bundle of fibers and they are part of the corticopontine tract. Just for the ease of understanding, I have mentioned a few quick functions of these frontopontine fibers. One of them is what is known as emotional smile, the mimetic smile. They carry fibers from the frontal lobe to the pontine nuclei, to the seventh nerve motor nucleus, smile, emotional smile. Then we have the fibers for the horizontal conjugate gaze, which goes from the frontal eye field to the paramedian pontine nucleus, reticular formation nucleus in the pons for horizontal gaze. Then we have fibers for accommodation, 
which do not go to the pons but they go to the nucleus in the midbrain. And finally, we have the fibers for micturation, voluntary control and coordinated micturation, which go from the micturation center in the frontal lobe to the pontine micturation center in the pons, and therefore the M stands for micturation. So, emotional smile, horizontal gaze, accommodation, micturation. These are some of the, just a few of the functions which are performed by these frontopontine tract fibers. Of course, there are many more and there are many other functions. This is just a few. This central portion of the anterior limb, the one marked in red here, the fibers are going up. They are also thalamocortical fibers like these, but there's a considerable difference between these thalamocortical fibers and these thalamocortical fibers. While these thalamocortical fibers carry general sensation, these thalamocortical fibers, they do not go to the parietal lobe. Instead, they go to the frontal lobe. And one example of these thalamocortical fibers are that, that which is a part of the papay's circuit, which goes from the anterior nucleus of the thalamus to the cingulate gyrus. It is a part of the papay circuit. So this is just one example. Of course, there are many such thalamocortical fibers which are traveling in the anterior limb of the internal capsule. So this is a diagrammatic representation of the internal capsule showing the anterior limb, the genome and the posterior limb with the various types of fibers traveling which have been given color codings and the direction of travel of the impulses are also mentioned by arrows. And finally, the blood supply to the anterior limb of the internal capsule is branches of the, the anterior medial central branches of the anterior cerebral artery. So this is, in a nutshell, the various fiber tracts which are located in the internal capsule. And this is again a diffusion tensor imaging and white matter tractography showing the disposition in a three-dimensional view of the corticospinal tract. As we can see, it is coming from the frontal lobe, it's coming from the motor cortex, and it is descending down. And here it is the corona radiata, here it becomes the internal capsule, and it descends further down. So this is the and incidentally, in this picture also, we can see some fibers of another type of group of fibers, which are referred to as the commissural fibers. In this case, it is the corpus callosum. That is just by the way. So this is the importance of the projection fibers, which become the in the internal capsule, and the very important component of these projection fibers, namely the corticospinal tract.